Hello, my friends. I'm Lucas and you're watching Codemons PL. If you like my work, please remember to click thumb up, subscribe to my channel and write some comments. First of all, I would like to mention my wonderful patrons who support my activity. Massive thanks, guys. These are people who believed in my passion, saw something valuable in it and decided to support me. It's really great when you know that there are a few crazy guys in the world who think like you, want to watch what you do and appreciate the effect of your work. This is really super motivating and gives you the strength to continue working. Please don't forget that you can be one of them. Just check my Patreon page and decide if you want to stay with me or go back home. There are different options to join but you need to decide by yourself. Once you join you will be able to surf on my page with no limits, watch and download all superb high resolution pictures, watch progress shots, check stories with unpublished in other media models, read the articles, watch the videos with no adverts and enjoy other benefits. Thanks to this I will try to give you some interesting content to keep you informed and entertained. I'm not pushing but you know, I'd like to make millions from modeling and this is the easiest way. I'm joking of course, but the truth is that it would be great to do this as a regular job. The only way is to build the channel and get new patrons. That's why in each episode I encourage you to support me in my passion. And I realize it's not easy these days, but if you have a few bucks you could drop in my cup, that would be great. Thanks. My plan for today was to prepare all the additional equipment and finish the base, but it turned out that I had to postpone the construction of the base to the next episode. So today I will focus on finishing the tank and getting it completely ready to sit in the mud. I start with resin elements from Eureka XXL. These are several parts from different sets. I drill a hole in each one to attach it to a wooden stick. Additionally, I cut the long box into two pieces to make smaller boxes. I planned the setup and started preparing for painting. Of course, all elements were covered with primer. First, I painted the sand color on the water containers. I think you will be interested in a way to make a visible mark on containers with liquids. Just mask the appropriate level and paint the thin layer of a very dark color. After removing the masking apply the base color so that the trace of this dark color is visible but not dominant. The red shade on the water containers will add some color to the overall look. A small detail however will be clearly visible due to its intensity. The cargo boxes were painted black but I think dark grey would be more appropriate. After painting it's time to clean the airbrush. I use a cleaner from Modeler's World for this purpose. It works in 100%. If you wanted to ask about the airbrush, it's Neo Eco SJ83. The boxes needed some more detailing, so now I paint matte markings on them as an addition, simply with a brush as if they were painted with whatever was available. Apart from the mat boxes, the remaining elements were washed. Nothing big, standard procedure and cleaning using a thinner for oil paints and enamels. On the matte crates I made a wash but in light color creating an imitation of dust. In this way I reduced the dark appearance of the boxes and at the same time emphasized all their shapes. By the way, as I mentioned before, the best is to paint such elements with a very dark grey or a shade similar to rubber black because the material from which these boxes are made is not perfectly black. After painting, I permanently glued the storage parts to the model. Due to the convenience of work, I prepared the larger set as one element 
and I will attach it in a moment when I add the transport strap to it. I will use the Mirioku set for this. Photo etched clasps are perfect for such an application as here. This producer has more useful kits for modern models, so it's worth visiting its website and checking what can be useful to upgrade our models. I cut the strips out of paper and glued them in the right place using super glue. I painted the whole thing in a contrasting color, in this case it was green sky. You have probably seen more than once that the end of transport straps has a characteristic hook. I very often make it from a piece of wire. It takes a few tries to get the bend right, but it looks pretty good. In this way you can prepare an element that will undoubtedly enrich and add realism to the surface of the model. Attaching the belt is time consuming and you have to do it quite gently because it's easy to tear the paper if you don't work with it carefully. I use super glue because in my opinion it is necessary if you want to keep the paper in place. The fact that sometimes it's a use without the possibility of undoing it, so you need to plan in advance what a given element should look like. It's worth remembering about appropriate length and width and also that such a belt often forms very strange shapes. Random setting is advisable because it builds realism. The entire strip was soaked in CA glue to strengthen the paper before painting. If you paint with acrylic paints, they may soften the structure of the bed and it will become deformed and after drying it will look bent and loose. The tarp will be made from a piece of paper that I had already prepared earlier and set aside for occasion like this. It's a tissue soaked in paint and PVA glue. After drying it is flexible and quite durable. It can be used many times by soaking with water or glue and the same drying. The color depends only on our needs. Just cut off the necessary piece, soak it in glue or water and when it won't get your fingers dirty, start placing it on the model. I have been using this solution for many years and it works every time I need to make non-standard additions to the model. You can enrich such an element with additional stripes, buttons, patches and other elements that can be found on tarps transported on vehicles. To attach the tarp I will prepare an expander which is a flexible thick cord that can be easily stretched and ends with small hooks. I use two types of copper wire to prepare it. The thicker one is a rope and the thinner one is a spring. Of course you can make the spring and hook from thinner wire but it will be problematic to attach it to any hooks due to the elasticity of the material. The colors are optional, but in my experience strong contrasting colors with transverse stripes look best, which will be clearly visible against the background of usually dark or subdued colors of tarps and other stowage elements.
I also painted the transport straps quite light. You can find various inspirations on the internet, so the only thing that limits us is the paint resources we have. On the dried tarp I made a gentle wash in the largest recesses. I spent a few moments improving the appearance of the gun station. It wasn't a difficult task, because I decided to polish the ammunition fitting belt with a pencil and add abrasions to the gun itself. Additionally, a bit of medium and light rust from modeler's sword will add a decidedly realistic look to the weapon components. The black pigment is perfect for shooting the barrel cover of the machine gun mounted in the turret. I decided that white masking mesh would add a nice look to the model. Additionally, I will place thin strips of paper cut from a tissue imitating toilet paper, which will also be helpful in attaching the mesh. What I will apply is the AK Interactive products, such a small amount is enough for bar and the front of the turret. I glued everything with solution glue, which is the improved version of pigment cement but with more options to use. Of course, from Modeler's World. Just soak the mesh so that it sticks to the surface of the model. After drying, the bond will be strong enough. If you are interested in working with such a mesh, check out my videos with Leopard and KF51, where there is much more. I use a heavily diluted dark grey wash to add a bit of dirt on the white surface of the material. This was necessary because the mesh contrasted greatly with the surface of the armor. Another proven addition are leaves from Acre Interactive which are easy to arrange and add a bit of atom look. The small amount you see will be enough to create a good effect. Just a bit of glue is enough to hold them in place and it's best to arrange them individually because then we can control the effect created. The flat black paint is perfect for getting dirt on exhaust covers. I painted them with airbrush, applying them from the top and bottom.
a bit of snow will be the icing on the cake. This time I will use baking soda and solution glue. I apply some glue in the place where there is supposed to be snow with a brush and then sprinkle the place with baking soda. Sorry that you can't see it properly but my camera focused on my hand not on the surface of the model. Finally I soak it again with a few dabs of glue and let it dry. Near the gun station I added a dozen or so shells from the master model. I used German flag shells for this purpose because their size was quite ok when I placed the shell on the ammunition fitting belt. A bit of wash is necessary to highlight the shapes and slightly mud the surface. Otherwise they will shine too brazenly on the surface of the turret. I glued them with a bit of solution glue. Alright, traditionally I added a chain to the model. I had already prepared a piece and now I just needed to stain it with pigment. This way it obtained a dirty brown rusty shade perfect for this element. I attached it to the shackle and socketed it, if one could say that about the metal element, with a few drops of solution glue. It looks great. On the dried snow I added a bit of grey wash which highlighted the edges and added some dirty spots on it. I'm sure overall there will be some minor tweaks added but you know, it's like a never ending story. You can do it over and over again. So finally I can say that I prepared the stowage but not the base as I planned. This will be shown in the next episode. For now, thank you for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel and write some comment. That's all for today. See you next time. Cheers!